established. Good afternoon. Mr. Chairman, the first speaker of the opposing team stated, well, the first speaker of the opposing team got his information from Wikipedia. How reliable is it? Most people learn from learn agricultural procedures in school. Mr. Mitchell is a drop of water in an entire lake. And now, Mr. Chairman, please allow me to continue my colleague's line of argument. Mr. Chairman, the transformation of the Eastern Caribbean economy has stimulated demand for some specific areas. For example, learning to learn life skills and information and communication technology. But, Mr. Chairman, our school system has abandoned its role to prepare students for post-secondary education. Employers are making a remarkable, remarkable request for behavioral life skills, also called soft skills. Honorable judges, the results of several surveys of private employers in 2007 highlight the extent to which they desire these skills. For instance, in St. Keith and Nevis, firms' top three desired skills were attitude to work, team spirit, and cooperation skills. In another survey of employers for the wider Caribbean, honesty and integrity, work ethics, and problem solving were the top skills required to obtain a job. Honorable judges, paradoxically, young students and workers are unaware of this high demand for life skills like commitment, cooperation, team spirit, and communication. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, only 3% of the youth reported that they lack soft and interpersonal skills. Sadly, Mr. Chairman, the lack of recognition of the importance of the life skills in the Eastern Caribbean is not unique. Mr. Chairman, a work group on skills development under the Caribbean Forum found that many school leavers did not have the prerequisite soft skills to function in the workplace. Caribbean Education Ministers, recognizing the need to equip our youth with these soft skills have branded 2009 as the year of the curriculum with the hope of creating a brand new graduate through a refocusing of the curriculum. Thus, Mr. Chairman, the curriculum will encompass knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values in a bid to create the whole person for successful performances at work and life in general. The result, honorable judges, is a workforce that lacks basic life skills. This manifests itself in the form of poor work ethics, poor customer service, and poor problem solving. Mr. Chairman, the overemphasis on academics leads to an education system that does not necessarily impact skills related to the labor market. Esteemed judges, how can there be sustainable development when human resources lack basic life skills? How can there be improvement and sustainability in the economy when we lack competence and productivity? How can the eco economy improve when we have keep square pegs in wrong holes? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the economic importance of the tourism sector in the employment should not be underestimated. The sector pre represents the largest income on in the OECS accounting for 25% of the gross domestic product. According to an employee survey conducted in Antigua, it was found that 8 out of every 10 jobs, ch job vacancies were expected to be in tourism. But Mr. Chairman, there exists a dearth of qualified personnel to fill critical positions in this very important industry. Mm -hmm. Thus, companies are often forced to attract expensive foreign born and trained employees to fill vacant posts as managers, chefs, and to a lesser extent, waiters, spa workers, and maintenance staff. This, honorable judges, is of great detriment to local economic benefits, as more value is placed on skilled workers in the, in the tourism sector in the Caribbean. There is an increasing risk of marginalizing, marginalizing low-skilled workers and youth. Honorable judges, opportunities are bound for workers with technical skills, information and communica communication technology skills especially. There is a need for plumbers, air condition technicians, and maintenance staff. Enterprises surveyed for the investment climate in Grenada and the case study on skills on the tourism sector in St. Lucia revealed by employers in 2005 that there exists great skill shortage in technical areas like industrial engineering and maintenance of positions and model and senior management levels. Mr. Chairman, 
let us consider the medical profession in Grenada. Most of our doctors are general practitioners, while specialists are badly lacking. A case in point is that currently Grenada has only one aging ENT specialist. This poses tremendous forms of inconvenience for Grenadians who need urgent attention from such a specialist doctor. Yes. Honorable judges, suppose our goodly ENT specialists to leave us for whatever reason. God forbid. <laughs> who will replace him? Are our education system and training catering for such a vital need? The same can be said of the lack of oncology specialists who treat cancer patients. Such a lack makes it compulsory for patients to seek treatment abroad at a tremendous cost. Those who are not financially fortunate, as most Grenadians, are left to die. Mr. Chairman, isn't the health of a nation the wealth of a nation? Isn't the health of a nation also the productivity of a nation? Mr. Chairman, how can the economy of a nation be sustained when the health of a nation is in jeopardy? How can there be sustainable development when a nation's health is enfeebled? I thank you.